India is quickly becoming a major player in robotic exploration on the moon. The country's long-standing space program has turned failure into success with their Chandrayaan lander, becoming a powerful ally in the US-led Artemis Accords, and for their next giant leap, India will begin a human spaceflight program that will send their people into orbit and further on to the moon itself. This is everything you need to know about the Indian space program. The successful touchdown of Chandrayaan-3 on the moon last year was the pivotal moment for India's space ambitions. It was also a major accomplishment for global lunar exploration. Having taken place amid many failed lunar landings, Chandrayaan-3 provided worldwide momentum for the moon, feeding into a modern frenzy of robotic explorers to the Earth's closest neighbor. Chandrayaan-3 also changed the perceptions of developed space powers about India's ability to explore space beyond Earth orbit. Paired with a new national space policy, the moon landing signaled the Indian government to let ISRO not only double down on lunar exploration, but go many steps further and develop a roadmap for human spaceflight that will converge with Chandrayaan at the moon. This was best highlighted by last year's announced national goal of sending an Indian to the moon by 2040. Now, to be clear, ISRO lacks the kind of resources for its space program that NASA and CNSA enjoy, with governmental Indian space funding being only a tenth to twentieth of China and the US, and private funding for deep space exploration being nearly zero. Despite the many highs of 2023 for Indian space, the fiscal year 2024 to 2025 budget of $1.56 billion for the country's Department of Space, of which ISRO gets the major chunk, has essentially stayed flat, meaning India's progress towards these lofty robotic and crude lunar goals will be gradual at best. Timelines of missions even in the near-term phase of the aforementioned roadmap should be taken about as seriously as those under NASA's Artemis program. Having said that, each milestone mission is interesting in itself for the space exploration abilities it unlocks for India and its partners. The biggest of those partners is now the US, thanks to last year's joint government announcements of broad Indo-US science and tech collaborations, as well as India's signing of the Artemis Accords. Since official information from ISRO regarding India's lunar crude exploration plan remains vague at best and often scattered in bits and pieces, this can make it difficult for media reports to capture missions properly in context. What we are going to try to do here is lay down everything we know about ISRO's plans for undertaking increasingly complex robotic Chandrayaan missions, where human spaceflight comes in, and what realistic timelines look like. Let's start with a list of missions in a realistic order of their likelihood and their objectives, with missions down the line being increasingly murky representations of the lunar capabilities India would like to achieve. Chandrayaan-4, a lunar sample return mission with a landing target by the end of the decade. Lupex, a collaboration between Japan and India. This would send a rover to study polar lunar water, also targeting before the end of the decade. Chandrayaan-5, a key objective will be to demonstrate frigid lunar night survival to enable long-term lunar missions, targeting the early 2030s. Chandrayaan-6 will demonstrate use of lunar resources towards building infrastructure and habitats target is the mid-2030s. Chandrayaan-7, this mission will tap into lunar water for building fuel stations and ultimately sustaining long-term lunar living and potentially also enable advanced deep space missions that could launch from the moon as part of their mission profile, targeting late 2030s here. At the India Space Congress 2024 in New Delhi this summer, the director of ISRO's Human Spaceflight Center provided clarity on what human spaceflight missions India aims to undertake after the initial demonstration of a crewed orbital Gaganyan flight mid-decade. One of the four Indian astronaut candidates will fly to the International Space Station in early 2025 on a NASA-contracted Axiom space mission aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. The specific Axiom mission would either be AX4 or AX5, depending on the closing of many multi-organizational agreements involved in the deal. HLVM3H1, the first crewed Gaganyan flight with one or two astronauts flying on an indigenously developed rocket and crew capsule, targeting late mid-decade with a mission duration of one day. 
The pacing item for this mission remains the environmental control and life support systems, whose feasibility ISRO is still evaluating, and so a crewed Gaganyan flight is not likely to take place mid-decade. HLVM3H2 is the second crewed Gaganyan flight with a mission duration of three days. LVM3G4, ISRO's first cargo supply mission to the International Space Station, currently under consideration with ISS partner countries for the end of the decade. BASB-1, the first module of India's upcoming space station called the Bharatiya Antariksha Station, which translates to Indian Space Station. Best case scenario, this could be put into orbit at the end of this decade. LVM-3G-5, this will be the first cargo supply mission to BASB-1. And then multi-module BAS coming sometime in the late 2030s. Obviously, setbacks in any of these missions would likely delay those that follow by years. Next up, we have the HVM-1, which is an uncrewed test flight of a human-capable spacecraft going to the moon and returning for a splashdown on Earth, targeting early 2030s. This mission is akin to NASA's Artemis-1. HVM-2 is a crewed flight to lunar orbit and back, targeting mid-2030s, would be the same deal as Artemis-2 and Apollo-8. Then we have the Lunar Cruiser, a crew-capable ISRO spacecraft docking with the NASA-led Gateway Lunar Orbital Habitat and potentially supplying cargo via a robotic configuration in the late 2030s. Lastly, we have HVM-3, a crewed Indian landing on the moon with or without a potential Gateway docking in the mix. This would be targeting sometime in the 2040s, a mission profile akin to CNSA's first crewed lunar mission. Because India's most powerful rocket, the launch vehicle Mark III or LVM-3, has less than half the payload capacity of China's Long March 5 rocket, which enabled CNSA to undertake the Chang'e 5 and Chang'e 6 sample return missions, ISRO's approach to bringing lunar samples with Chandrayaan-4 will involve two rocket launches from Earth. In a March interview with the Times of India, ISRO chief S. Somnat said that with preliminary studies of such a mission architecture complete, ISRO will soon submit a funding proposal to the Indian government for commissioning Chandrayaan-4. With Chandrayaan-3, the agency hit several extended goals as well. One of these was pulling the mission's propulsion module from lunar orbit to Earth orbit, thereby demonstrating a small but key capability that will be required to pull off a robotic sample return mission in the future. One of the most complex parts of Chandrayaan-4 would be remotely docking two or more robotic modules in lunar orbit, a feat only China has achieved so far. Leading up to this, ISRO will launch the approximately $14 million SPADE-X or Space Docking Experiment mission at the end of this year, although it's more likely to happen next year, wherein two spacecraft will practice docking in Earth orbit. This will cut down risk not only for Chandrayaan-4, but also for the Gaganyan cargo flights to the International Space Station and India's Bas b one station module later this decade. Naturally, all these missions will feed into enabling ISRO to send humans to the moon, wherein large modules will need to safely dock with each other. India and Japan are collaborating on a lunar polar rover mission called LUPEX. The nominal six-month mission comprises an ISRO-developed lander which will deliver a JAXA-built 350kg rover to directly study the nature, abundance, and accessibility of water ice at the Moon's South Pole. This makes LUPEX similar to CNSA's Chang'e 7 mission and NASA's now-cancelled Viper rover. In order to safely and precisely land LUPEX amid unforgiving polar terrain, ISRO will build the lander with input from both Chandrayaan 3's successes and that of JAXA's slim lunar lander. LUPEX builds on the previous Indo Japanese lunar collaboration of ISRO's Chandrayaan 2 orbiter, helping JAXA nail Slim's goal of a precision lunar landing. In the March interview with the Times of India, ISRO chief Somnat said that work is progressing slowly on new throttle-able engines needed for the LUPEX mission's big 6,000kg lander. In a November 2023 talk at the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, director of ISRO Space Application Center Nilesh Desai said that LUPEX will be executed in no less than five years. This was realistically expected, but not previously clarified by ISRO or JAXA. While the Japanese government has approved the LUPEX mission, India has not. This formal green light is expected soon, but we aren't there yet. The lander's preliminary design review seems to be pending too. 
The rover's development is further along, but its instruments aren't finalized yet, despite it being originally expected to be done over a year ago. Landing site selection studies for LUPEX have been ongoing, feeding into as well as building on ISRO's ongoing aid to NASA for planning crewed Artemis missions. Virtually nothing is known about Chandrayaan-5 at the moment other than its core goal of demonstrating survival against frigid lunar nights. However, Chandrayaan-3 had another trick up its sleeve that will let ISRO move forward on Chandrayaan-5 sooner rather than later. The Times of India confirmed last year that there are two 1 watt radio isotope heater units on the Chandrayaan-3 propulsion module. ISRO hadn't previously announced their presence, the mission project director previously said the RHUs couldn't be installed on the lander and rover for their lunar night survival due to mass constraints. The RHUs, made in collaboration with the Baba Atomic Research Center, are based on the radioactive sources of Americium-241. The Indian Space Agency's foray into operational RHUs is a great sign as it's precisely the technology that has enabled China to have its Chang'e 4 lander and rover wake up after cold lunar nights. The second Indo-US collaboration meeting of the Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technology was held in New Delhi on June 17th. According to a US White House briefing, NASA and ISRO are exploring opportunities for India to participate in the upcoming NASA-led Gateway Lunar Orbital Habitat. While the briefing didn't specify the nature of India's contributions, ISRO's notional roadmap for Chandrayaan and Gaganyaan missions shows a crewed Gaganyaan lunar cruiser craft that can dock with the Gateway. In a recent Indian space industry meet, ISRO chief Somnath once again displayed the same roadmap on a slide while another slide showed the name Gaganyan C with a subtitle that read, Lunar Flyby, Lunar Landing, Return. While India is the third nation this century to have announced the goal of sending a human to the moon by itself, the country still doesn't have the kind of heavy lift launch resources enjoyed by the US and China. Big rockets are indispensable if India is to undertake such ambitious missions, but the truth is Chandrayaan-3 alone filled LVM-3's payload capacity to the brim. However, ISRO has begun taking its first steps towards increasing its mass-to-orbit capabilities. The agency is in the process of testing an engine upgrade to LVM-3's core stage, which would replace the existing two VCAS engines with an indigenously built 2000 kN semi cryogenic Carolox engine called SCE 200. This will increase the rocket's GTO capacity from about 4000 kg to at least 6000. ISRO is also testing engine restart capability for LVM 3's upper stage cryogenic engine to enable more complex mission profiles. At the India Space Congress 2024 in New Delhi, the director of ISRO's Liquid Propulsion Space Center said that the target to launch an SCE-200 on an LVM-3 is 2027, a point in time later than originally expected but still early enough to be leveraged by the upcoming Chandrayaan and initial Gaganyan missions. ISRO knows that even the semi-cryogenic LVM-3 is a stopgap solution for its bigger ambitions, and so the agency has begun developing a partially reusable next-generation launch vehicle, or NGLV, which will have an expendable GTO capability of 10,000 kilograms. Heavier variants of the Methalox-powered NGLV will follow to further increase mass to orbit. The NGLV project has established a formal project team, and ISRO expects the rocket to take about a decade to launch. This leaves the semi-cryogenic LVM-3 to muster more than would be usual for a rocket of its lift capacity, but it's also partly why ISRO recently announced ramping up LVM-3's production from the current rate of 2 a year to 4 and then 6. It's also worth noting that India's planetary missions follow the fundamental ISRO principle of indigenous launches and self-sufficient missions as much as possible, and so using a foreign launcher like, say, the SpaceX Falcon 9 for such missions is not on the table unless absolutely needed. To learn more about ISRO's Chandrayaan moon missions, check out the dedicated page on Jatan's blog at jatan.space slash tag slash Chandrayaan. And thank you to Jatan for his contributions with today's script. If you would like to subscribe to one of his newsletters, visit jatan.space or click the link in the description.